Hi, my name is Peter Coburn of Kohu Incorporated, and this presentation will describe the evolution of a 55 gigahertz octal site wafer test pro card for 5G millimeter wave devices. After summarizing the key features of the original probe card, I will describe several areas in which the design has evolved, including the requirements that drove the change, the methods we employed, and the results of the design improvements. At last year's Southwest test, Jason Merchkowski described an innovative probe card for testing WLCSP millimeter wave devices that supported high bandwidth RF connectivity for both direct and loopback testing. It was implemented using a direct attach PCB technology that supports a 150 micron pitch fanout, allowing a large amount of test functionality to be included in an eight site layout. Each site features over 600 fine pitch spring probes and the probe head design allows for the attachment of a manual test option that can be used across all eight sites simultaneously. Since the original deployment of this probe card last year, we have evolved the design in response to changing customer requirements and also to improve functionality in several key areas. The 55 gigahertz MBRF signals required a change of the matching impedance from 50 ohms to 35 ohms. The alignment mechanism between the probe head and probe card PCB was improved. The manual test option design was changed to improve multi-site operation. A feasibility study for implementing denser multi-site test patterns was completed. I will now describe each of these functional improvements in more detail. In the original design, all the RF signals required a matching impedance of 50 ohms in the interface hardware to achieve the best performance. This required tuning of the probe head cross-section and PCB layout to provide a 50 ohm signal path from DUT to tester. In a new customer device under test or DUT design, the MB channels operating at up to 55 gigahertz now have an impedance of 35 ohms, and this required several parts of the interface hardware to be redesigned. A new PCB layout is required with trace geometries for the MB signals matched to 35 ohms in the DUT launch area. The probe head cross-section needs to continue to support 50 ohm impedance matching on LB and other RF signals, but also now requires 35 ohm impedance matching for the MB signals. As the test equipment used will still be 50 ohms, a 35 ohm to 50 ohm impedance transformer is required, where the signals on the PCB transition from the DUT launch area to RF cable connectors. Without these changes, test results renormalized to 35 ohms would have degraded return loss performance and no longer meet the goal of better than minus 10 dB up to 55 gigahertz. To evaluate the feasibility of changing the tightly packed DUT signal layout, a simpler coupon board design was started, which implemented new 35 ohm trace geometries for both direct connection paths from DUT to tester instrumentation on layer one and loopback paths on lower layers of the load board. The wider trace geometry for 35 ohms required the position of several other traces to be adjusted, but overall the changes could be accommodated without affecting the DUT spacing. If only the PCB traces are changed to 35 ohms, this will result in multiple impedance discontinuities, as the signal transitions from a 35 ohm DUT to a 50 ohm probe, then a 35 ohm PCB, and finally back to a 50 ohm RF cable connection. The resulting return loss performance is even worse than the simple renormalized case, so additional design changes need to be made in the other elements of the signal path. The probe head and C Viper probe cross section also need to match the 35 ohm impedance of the DUT MB signals, but the challenge here is to maintain 50 ohm impedance for all the other signals in the DUT layout. One approach considered was to reduce the spacing between the 0.15 mm pitch C Viper signal probes and adjacent ground probes by implementing a wider signal probe. This was not possible, as the DUT layout for the MB signals included some tight signal-to-ground spacing that would not allow for a wider signal probe. 
Instead, a wider ground probe was designed that could be used in selected ground locations to reduce the overall impedance of the MB cross-section. A new ground probe was designed and built to match several key parameters of the original signal probe, including test height, spring force at test height, and crown tip profile where the probe touches the duct ball. The new probe is considerably wider to reduce overall impedance in the new cross-section, and when tested for C-Res performance over time, it showed very stable results after initial cleaning of the test setup out to 1 million cycles. Including the new probe cross-section in the simulation model showed that return loss is now in the expected range of better than minus 10 dB. As the probe cross-section impedance was not a perfect match to 35 ohms, the PCB strip line trace geometry was adjusted to get a closer overall match. As mentioned earlier, the direct connection RF signals are routed to test equipment via a coaxial connector and RF cable, which are all matched for 50 ohms. This requires an impedance transformer to be implemented in the PCB traces that connect from the DUT launch area to the RF connector. The matching of a 35 ohm DUT environment to a 50 ohm test environment has now been implemented on a C Viper probe stack up and PCB layout and measured after assembly to verify that the targeted performance is being achieved, as shown in the accompanying return loss plots. Another feature of the probe card design is a manual actuator, or MA, which is used when the customer does not have access to an automated wafer prober and wants to test singulated die. The initial design was focused on ease of use across all eight sites of the probe card and used a single lid and load plate assembly. At this fine pitch, it became clear that an alternative approach was required to improve alignment and connectivity across all sites. The alignment mechanism was simplified and a more modular design used to minimize stack up of dimensional tolerances across the testing area. In the original design, a floating alignment plate or FAP was used on each site to protect the probes of the probe head and help to align each dot into the test position. However, the inherent positional variations of a spring-loaded FAP were too great to allow reliable contacting across all sites, so the design now uses a simpler fixed alignment frame or FAF, which is referenced directly to the probe head body for improved alignment accuracy. The single lid MA design has been replaced by four dual site MAs, which also helps to minimize the stack up for each site tested, resulting in more reliable testing. When fitting probe heads to probe cards for such fine pitch applications, there is no margin for error if good alignment and connectivity is to be achieved across all sites. Customers expect to be able to swap out probe heads locally without requiring a time consuming realignment process. The initial probe head and PCB design have evolved in several ways to improve the alignment mechanism. Monte Carlo analysis techniques were used to identify the features of the design that had the greatest impact on alignment accuracy. The pictures show the front of the old and new probe head designs, which initially appear very similar. Differences in the new design include a change to the size and position of the alignment pins to make them more robust and accurate. Fiducial features are added on the PCB, which provides a higher accuracy reference for drilling alignment holes and a visual reference that can be used to check alignment of the probe head. Some items in the probe head assembly were simplified to reduce stack up errors across the multi-site layout. The pictures show the front and back of the new probe head design with the new design features identified in red. Six holes to align with PCP fiducials more robust and accurate alignment pins, a single piece probe retainer plate or PRP. Tighter machining tolerances are also included in the new design where this improves the alignment accuracy. To validate the new alignment mechanisms, a simplified version of the probe card PCB was designed and built, which duplicates the high density, fine pitch dut layout across eight sites but fans this out using simpler low-speed traces to electrical test points as well as the normal tester pogo pads.
This allows a dot pad to test point validation to be performed on the bare PCB using a flying probe tester, or a dot probe to tester pad validation to be performed on a complete probe head and PCB assembly using a probe card analyzer. A DOE has been defined to assess the variability of the manufacturing processes using several copies of the probe heads and PCBs which are manufactured at different times and will be assembled and tested in different combinations. For a high volume production test, a more compact multi-site layout is preferred as it will typically result in fewer skip die when testing near the edge of the wafer, translating into higher overall touchdown efficiency, higher throughput, and therefore lower cost of test or COT. The original test site layout implemented eight sites in a one by eight single row with three skip die between each site. This was required to accommodate the large amount of RF test circuitry routed out from each site. A new design has been proposed that implements the one by eight layout with only one skip die between sites, resulting in a 48% reduction in the length of the multi-site test layout. The first step was to confirm that a new PCB layout could be defined that supported the required level of per site test functionality within the tighter space restrictions. A new test schematic was defined by the customer that allowed for the removal of some trace structures. Specific RF insertion loss goals were also defined that would influence the overall layout requirements. A new propode layout was defined and a Boeing study performed to confirm that planarity could be maintained across the denser multi-site pattern. After the constraints of the circuit design and probe head were defined, the layout feasibility study could be completed to confirm that the new denser multi-site pattern was possible. The Boeing analysis used ANSYS simulation tools to model the stresses created by the 8 by 600 probes in the probe head design. The design uses a one-piece ceramic body to house the probes, surrounded by a stainless steel frame. But even with this, the initial analysis indicated that maximum deformation in the center of the test area would exceed a target limit of 50 microns. To reduce bowing, the attachment points for the probe head were moved closer to the dut area. This creates additional challenges for the PCB routing, so it is important to define the two designs in parallel to avoid surprises later. The stainless steel frame was also extended between each site area, and with these changes, the bowing within the dut area was reduced to less than the 50 micron threshold. Initial feasibility studies for the denser eight site layout confirm it is possible. Follow-on work can include a complete routing and fabrication of the new design, but the possibility to create a 16-site pattern is also being explored. The final design would need to accommodate all the signal routing requirements and respect the layout restrictions created by the probe head attachment and alignment features. The RF cabling used is also being reviewed to see if shorter lengths will be usable in the new layout to help minimize insertion loss contribution. To summarize and conclude, the millimeter wave probe card design that was first presented last year has already been deployed at multiple locations and successfully used. Nothing stands still in our technology driven world, however, so the design has evolved in several areas to meet new customer requirements improve usability and reduce cost of test. I've described the changes required to match 35 ohm impedance of the millimeter wave MB signals, how the probe head and PCB design have changed to improve alignment, improvements to the manual test option for improved multi-site operation and options to increase the density of the multi-site test pattern. This project has required dedicated support from teams across Kohu and SynergyCAD, and I'd like to finish by thanking them all for their contributions to the project and this presentation.